Hi, this is Chris Hanusa, and today I'm going to talk about my research methods. I consider myself to be an experimental mathematician. Now, what does that mean? Well, I study discrete objects, objects like these binary trees, where there is a top node and every node is allowed to have a right child and or a left child. So we can ask, how many binary trees are there? Well, there are infinitely many of them. But when we restrict or group these objects based on some parameter or combinatorial statistic, then there are only a finite number of them and we can count them. For instance, if we condition on how many nodes they have, well, there is one tree with one node, two trees with two nodes, the red ones, five trees with five nodes, the yellow ones, then 14, 42, and so on. If we instead condition on how high the tree is, then the sequence is different. Uh, 1, 3, 21, 651, and so on. The experiments come in if I want to prove theorems or create conjectures about these objects. I use a computer and some mathematical software to generate all objects and condition on their properties. Then I can program the computer to count the objects, or filter the objects, or match the objects, or generate large examples to learn something new, and eventually develop intuition in order to prove a theorem. Unlike other sciences, my experiments generate exact, true results, so I know my answer is perfectly correct, but then I have to prove some theorem that explains the properties that I see. Now, let me give some specific examples. The first example has to do with a certain type of integer partition, which is a way to break down integers into parts. For example, we might break down 11 into one part of 6, one part of 3, and two parts of 1 which we can represent visually with this diagram that has six boxes in the first row, three boxes in the next, and then one box in each of the next two rows. We can fill each box with a number that counts how many boxes are in the hook directly to the right and directly below the circled box. Um, the circled box here has hook length six. A t-core partition is a partition whose diagram has no t's. For instance, this partition is a 4-core and a 7-core because we don't see any 4s or 7s in the numbers. Uh, core partitions show up in abstract algebra, number theory, and representation theory to name a few places where they arise. This family of objects is interesting because they're in bijection, or they can be paired up with many other families of discrete objects, and they have nice numerical properties. When I do experiments, I try to see how combinatorial statistics in core partitions relate to combinatorial statistics in these other families. Uh, by generating collecting data, we can determine interesting patterns, such as this conjecture by Drew Armstrong, that the no average number of boxes in an ST simultaneous core partition is S plus T plus 1 times S minus 1 times T minus 1 divided by 24. That means if you were to take all of the partitions that are both S-core partitions and T-core partitions, then averaged how many boxes they would have, you would get exactly this formula. So This is a beautiful formula that has been verified by computer experiment for many, many, many cases, but it has so far resisted a proof by hand. Here's another nice chart which I generated collecting data using a computer that tries to say something about the structure of symmetric or self-conjugate core partitions. It would have been difficult to conjecture anything without the visualization and calculation capabilities of a computer. Let's talk about one more topic that I've been thinking about using experimental methods. The question goes, can you place n queens on an n by n chessboard in such a way that no two queens attack each other? Remember that a queen can attack horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Well, in this case, yes, it is possible. So we can then ask, in how many ways can you place n non-attacking queens? Well, we can use our computer to generate data to find this sequence of numbers. For instance, a classic computer science homework question asks students to show that there are 92 ways to place eight non-attacking queens on an 8x8 chessboard. But computer algorithms can only take us so far. It would take a computer an impractically long time to give the answer for even a 100 by 100 board. So we wanted to find a mathematical method to give a formula. With my co-authors Tom Zaslavsky and Seth Chaikin, we used a classical mathematical technique of trying to solve a more general problem. We now fix a number of pieces q on an n by n board as n increases. 
or even some arbitrary dilating convex polygonal board, and allow pieces to have any types of rider moves, which means the pieces can move arbitrarily far in a fixed direction. We were able to prove theorems about the structure of the corresponding function. During the process, we used computers for doing calculations or simplifications that would be too tedious or too error-prone by hand, and we also used it to check our theory against collected data. For example, here is the exact formula for the number of ways to place three non-attacking queens on an n-by-n chessboard. While this particular formula is not new, our method is the first one that can be applied in a wide range of situations and has strong mathematics behind it. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening, and check out my webpage for my papers, my talks, some animations, and more.